increased heart rate, heavy breathing and sweating hands. These are some of the symptoms we experience when our body responds to perceived physical or mental threats. We have all experienced fear and anxiety at some points in our lives. Like when we get ready to deliver a speech in front of an audience, is that fear or anxiety? Fear is an immediate response to a threat. Anxiety is often a healthy response to uncertainty and danger. We all have a racing mind dealing with the worries of our day-to-day -day lives. But constant worry and nervousness may be a sign of anxiety disorder. The symptoms of anxiety vary a lot from person to person. One might experience most of the anxiety symptoms physically, like feeling a tightness in the chest, shaky hands or dizziness. Some of the likely emotional effects can be racing mind or self-depreciative nature. Anxiety can also affect how a person behaves. Constant mood swings and restlessness are the most common. Anxiety is the result of constant interactions between a number of different brain regions. When someone confronts a dangerous situation, two brain circuits become active and transmit sensory information about the danger to different parts of the brain. The cerebral cortex, the outermost part of the brain, is used for thinking and decision making. And the amygdala is used for emotional processing. The amygdala monitors the body's reaction to the environment, evaluating an event's emotional significance. The amygdala organizes physical or mental responses of the body without the conscious mind being aware of it. This may be due to thousands of years of human survival instincts kicking in. Although several brain circuits are activated simultaneously, the amygdala initiates a fast response to danger. It communicates with the hypothalamus at the base of the brain, prompting quick release of hormones that raise heart rate and blood pressure, tense the muscles and ready the body to the most appropriate immediate response needed in emergency situations also known as the flight or fight response. The system is activated before the cerebral cortex can process what is happening. For example, the reflex of a person to get their hand out of a hot saucepan without being consciously aware of what's happening. We feel anxiety when signals from the emotional brain that is the amygdala overpowers the cognitive brain that is the cerebral cortex. If you can rationalize, for example, before the speech that the audience are only waiting to listen to what you have to say, then the cognitive brain balances the emotional brain to calm your mind down. There are several types of anxiety disorders including journalized anxiety disorders, panic disorders and phobia related disorders. And while each type has unique symptoms, journalized anxiety disorder is the most common and will often involve persistent worries regarding non-specific life events and situations. In panic disorder, the amygdala hyperactivity might be caused due to the decrease in a certain neurotransmitter in some areas of the brain. To know more about neurotransmitters and how it works inside the brain, watch our previous video related to the inner workings of the brain, the link to which you'll find in the description below. In social anxiety disorder, being exposed to images of unknown faces led to extra activity in the amygdala. When people with anxious disorders are shown pictures of fearful faces, a region in the frontal lobe amplifies interactions with the amygdala producing visible anxiety symptoms in them. People without anxiety show little to no responses to such triggers. Patients with damage to this brain region are more likely to experience anxiety since the amygdala works without control. Scientists using non-invasive techniques like fMRI or PET have found that patients with anxiety disorders have more activity than normal in the limbic system the part of the brain responsible for our emotional processing. The amygdala also works with other brain structures to store emotional memories, including memories of frightening events. In people with anxiety disorders, this can become a problem since the amygdala may be so sensitive that it overreacts to a situation that isn't really threatening, triggering the brain circuits that provoke an emergency stress response. 
Over time, anxiety becomes attached to situations, thoughts and memories unrelated to genuine sources of danger. In this sense, the brain may create its own fears. Life experiences also contribute to anxiety disorders. Severe and constant stress can produce a hyperactive anxiety reaction. People with some personality traits such as shyness may also be more vulnerable to developing anxiety disorders. Scientists have found specialized brain cells in mice that appear to control their anxiety levels. They have discovered the cells in the hippocampus, an area of the brain known to be involved in anxiety as well as navigation and memory. Mice tend to be afraid of open places. The researchers monitored the activity of brain cells by putting them in a maze in which some pathways led to open areas. They found that these cells become more active whenever the animal went into an area that provokes anxiety. Though this activity doesn't prove that the cells were causing the anxious behavior, but the team did find a way to control the activity of these cells. When the researchers dialed up the cell's activity, the mice got more anxious and did not want to explore at all. There's a lot more to anxiety than just these cells in the hippocampus. These cells are probably just one part of an extended circuit by which the animal learns about anxiety-related information. Researchers are still working out a lot of details on how differences in the brain lead to anxiety and depression. The limbic system has a lot of parts and there's a lot of variation in the symptoms and severity of these disorders. Apart from the psychological treatments with therapies like CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy, medications are also very helpful in treating anxiety. The medication for anxiety and depression works to maintain the balance of a specific neurotransmitter called serotonin that is associated with moods in the brain. But more about that next time. If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.